So let me just tell you a little bit about Martin. Uh, Martin is a musician, composer, and music historian. Um, he's from Long Beach, California, Los Angeles area growing up. Um, and his specialty is pre-Hispanic music and musical instruments. And um, I can like totally give some some personal information um, about this. I ordered, a, this is how I met Martin, was I ordered a teponazzi from from Etsy and he was the guy on the other side that was making them and and not only yeah there we go not only whenever he I received the instrument was it amazing but his um uh, follow-up was awesome I told him that what I was going to be using it for and he was like dude let me help let me join you you know and it was just a great um uh, uh reaction and so um his musicianship and and crafting is is amazing and so that's like just my personal experience with him and um but he has a lot of knowledge he's been doing it for a long time it was his, since the 60s um 75 75 sorry <laughs> he's 70 uh and and so um he's also played music all over the place um from central america to other places around the world um he has also been um he is also a part of a band called Mexica um, that performs as well. And, um, you know, today he's here to share some knowledge with us in, in regard to um, ancient uh, Mexican music and, and uh, instruments. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and uh, pass it over to, to Martin so he can go ahead and get the presentation going. And that way we don't miss out on any time for questions and whatnot. So please, if you can direct your attention and then also um, make sure you guys stay on mute. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm gonna, I rarely look down at notes, but I'm gonna look at some notes because what I love to do is to, uh, to me, every, a lot of things relate to one another. And I'll be talking about something going, dun, 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 dun. oh, that's right. And I forgot to tell you, dun, 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 dun. and next thing you know, we're gonna be here three days. So it's gonna be a real, you know, so I'm gonna try to be real, real tight and, um, and so you can see me looking down every once in a while because I hate to, I think it looks, I don't, know, I don't think it looks good, but here you go. I don't like headphones either, but here we are. I'm going to play for you, okay? I'm not going to tell you what it is. Just listen. Oh, let's do a sound check. Is it, by the way, does everybody hear it? You should be, uh, if you have headphones, you'll hear the response a lot better. If you're listening through, uh, through, your, through your iPhone, it's going to be a little bit more of a ghetto experience. And if you um, and um, if you listen through speakers, you, you, you have some really good ones. The car speakers are cool. So let's let's give it a little sound check real quick to see if everything sounds cool. Not too loud. Okay, no one's. I don't see any heads. I, want, I saw three of them. Okay, good. That's good enough for me. Okay. Well, Martin, I was just gonna say real quick. Uh, the instrument sounded uh, fantastic. Uh, your voice is a little low. It's a little hard to hear you speak. How about That's that? Like, like that? Much better. Okay, I'm going to put awesome. on the teacher's voice. <clears throat> okay, yeah, this is a funny mic. If I get like about one inch back, all of a sudden my volume drops. So I'll get right there. Remember we were doing that earlier, Gabby? You no, know, I didn't do it. So I'm going to get right here. Sound good to me? Sound good to you guys? Okay, here we go. Okay, forget everything you just heard. Here we go.
gracias. There you go. Could you hear okay? Okay, good, good. So um, we'll talk about those pieces later. Basically, I have a, a looping device. It's a machine that looks like this. And I can record a big, giant, wet, wet drum. And I can record a clay pots and rattles. And then I can assign them. And I can bring them in and bring them out and turn them on and turn them off and do all that kind of wacky stuff like that. Um, <coughs> that's a piece called Yumkash. Uh, and um, the instruments here, you'll see them all, you'll hear them all being explained in a second. The very first thing I want to cover is some musical terms, because there may not be many musicians here. Okay? Things you already know, but let's talk about them real, real quick. Okay? First of all, there's this thing called dynamics. It's loud and soft. So you might hear me slip and go, the dynamics of this flute are very powerful. That means it can do really soft and really loud. You know, the dynamics are, the instrument's great, but the dynamics are really bad. And it, it can play really only high, and you try to play it quietly, and it doesn't work like this one. This one, you can only play it, it only goes loud and high. You cannot play it quietly. It, do, it just doesn't work, you know. <clears throat> and it's just, it's the way it's constructed. <clears throat> there are some instruments you can do it, and some you can't. Basically, when you have this kind of mouthpiece, where you blow in and the sound comes out, what happens is that kind of mouthpiece is when you do that, if you blow hard, really hard, you'll go into the next note like this, watch. I'll, I'm not gonna change my fingering, so watch. Sorry, I messed up. See, I just blow a little bit harder and it shoots up to the next register. And um, that's something that on these kinds of flutes, um, you, you can't do that exactly. It, you, you, you blow and it just stays at the high. You can't go to the low and you can't go to the, you can only go high. And there's other ones where you can do that. And it just depends how they were made. So dynamics instruments are loud and soft. There's tempo, which is, uh, you know, time. And, and really think of in Spanish, tiempo, right? Tempo is fast music and slow music. So I, make re my, I may make references to tempos and things. Um, there's something called melody, which are single lines and usually not in a, usually not in a, in a vertical sense. They're in a horizontal. So one note follows the next. Da, 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 da. They may go up and down, but they're still going in a linear fashion. Like that, see? And that's still linear. And then there's horizontal, where there may be several notes going on at the same time, such as this one. So this is, I could play linearly, straight across, but then I can change what's happening horizontally. Really neat, because that means I can hold the low one, uh, and on top, like the you hear the bagpipes, like that, right? <coughs> so um, there's melody, <coughs> and then there's melodies where there's single melodies, there's sometimes double, there's sometimes triple, there's sometimes you know there's all these melodies could be going on at the same time, which is called polyphonic, poly for many, phonic for sound, many sounds, and um, then there's rhythm, of course, okay. And um, we, we, we're in a modern age where we get a musical term really messed up. You ever, you ever hear when people say, what do you do for a living? I make beats. It's a bad term. It's a wrong term. Here's the beat. That's a beat. One beat. If I put them together, well, it's just three noises. But if I put them together, and like short, short, long, and then I repeat them, then it's a rhythm. What happens in modern music, you hear boom, chicka boom, boom, chicka boom, boom, chicka boom, boom, right? Let's say that's one, a, a groove you're doing. But really, all they're doing is this, doom, chicka doom, doom. Then they cut it and paste it and make sure it goes doom, chicka doom, doom. You pay $30 to hear that all night long, the same rhythm. Oh, yeah, this is really cool, man. The same rhythm, you know? And that's good, okay? So that's rhythm, okay? Uh, not to, so we got to throw that word out, beat. Just remember what beat means. Beat means an organized set of notes. 
and we'll be t I'll be talking about rhythm. <coughs> um, that's pretty much it. Those are the music generals. Let's see, hold on. Okay, now there are four kinds of instruments all over around the world. Okay, this is good for you to know because you'll know about every music. So when somebody says something silly about our instruments, they go, "Oh, Mexican instruments, all they had were flutes." And I go, "Man, what college did you go to?" You know, besides these books and these documents, there's no th book that says everything you missed since 1491. Everything you for they forgot to tell you about your culture in 29 pages. Okay, you have to go to different places and find them, and then you have to read what, uh, and I'm telling you this as Chicano studies uh, students, uh, it's the same work I have to do. I have to go, which author is reliable, and, that this, and is this author, I can read him, but I know that sometimes he refers to certain things. So get to know who these authors are. It doesn't mean because they wrote a book that they know how to write a book. It doesn't mean because they documented it that they didn't stick their own opinion in there. Just like in the ancient writers of the Spanish, you know, like when they, how do I know about the music that we had? We have several things, and I'll talk about the kind of instruments we have in a second. We had several things. How do we know how this music sounded? Number one, we have no exact way. There's no recorded. And if we did, that would be only one region, or maybe two or three. Mexico is a gigantic place. And um, the reason we know about anything about these instruments is because we have artifacts that were in the ground. So if we have this, we know it, what it sounded like. We don't know exactly how it was played. I mean, let's diverge for one sec, uh, go off to the side for one second. What if I did this? But then I call, another guy comes on and does this. Hear the difference? I'll turn the effect off. So one was detached, the other one was ligado, stuck together. There may be a style where everybody played ligado in one, one village. So maybe somebody else rolled their tongue. We don't know. The instrument doesn't say, if you roll your tongue, you'll get a cool sound. So you have to rely on your human being, you know. Um, or how about this one? Singing along with it. You know, and so you, I can even hold a note. Watch. <laughs> Who knows what they did? We don't know. The instrument doesn't tell us. We know that they do this. Okay, great. Oh, we also know that they can half hold. So it doesn't just get five notes, it gets microtones. We don't know what they did. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, any remote people that are living like in little villages that are really far away, that were doing anything about what the Spanish documented at that time that they did, um, to the best of their knowledge, you know, these people that were writing down the chron chroniclers, they, didn't, they weren't all musicians, you know. And you gotta remember, when the Spanish wrote their things down at the time they were invading Mexico, they weren't going, oh, these people are so wonderful, let's write about them. They played their demonic flutes. Oh, those are demonic flutes. I didn't know that. Cool. Wow. See, see, that's when you see that they're adding in their opinion. So be careful when you're doing your research. Notice, did the writer say, the tree fell down? Hmm. Or did the writer say, the accursed diabolical tree fell and it was their fault? It's the same thing, only I'm adding my, you know, my zeal to uh, Catholicize everybody in Mexico, you know, and also protect my butt too. Because you remember that back then, if you showed any kind of favor to the natives, you'd wind up in a box with spikes. The Inquisition, remember that one? Yeah, take a look at the stuff they used. Really, you know, headgear that had spikes and close it in there. That feels pretty good. Get rid of the tension in your chakras. And um, so, you know, the, the, and, and any, of the con any of the people that wrote anything that seems like it was a good observation, um, even the bad observations, they, uh, they played their accursed trumpets on top of the temples. Ah, we know they played the seashells on the temple, see? So try to read through that, but then throw the bull out. I always say when you're going to do research on anything about Asia, uh, Native America, or Africa, always, you know how they say put a little salt on it? I say no, put some chili on it to cleanse it. Look at who the author is, you know. 
I had a really negative experience as a father um, trying to find books. I thought, well, you know, books are books, and somebody must have written it down. There's got to be stories about our people. And I was finding the Rechol Rain story. Oh, wow. A traditional story about Rechol people by Mark Schwarzenkopf and Anna uh, Hanachtenberg. And I thought, okay, that's cool, but where are our people writing about our stories? You know? I, I, it's still to this day, you know, I mean, my daughter's grown up already, but still to this day, I, I hardly come across any peop, any authors that are doing our own stuff. You know, where's our Chicano studies? Oh, I got married and then I, I left. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We got to, you know, we got to step on the gas and do something with these studies. Make it part of our lives. Make it, you know, we, we defend ourselves and with our knowledge. Um, so there, were, going back to the instruments, there were four types of instruments all over the world, all over. There's only four. Uh, number one is the voice. And of course, you have different languages. In Mexico, at, in, in uh, ancient times, there was something like, uh, we're just talking about Mexico, there was something like 250 different indigenous languages. Okay, a lot of them were branches of another, like the Mayans, is, I believe it's 24 different dialects of the Mayan language. So it's like the same language, but 24 different versions. And there's different ways of speaking Nahuatl, not Nahuatl, Nahuatl. And um, so you got voices, okay? And all different ways of singing. Who knows how they sing? Um, Number two, the string instruments. I got to show you this. Let me get it out. I never pick it out until the last second. If you know what a gourd is, a gourd is a big, round pumpkin plant. You hollow it out, take out the seeds and everything, and um, and you've got a hollow body, like the hollow body of a guitar with a hole in it. And then you put the neck of the guitar and the string, and you place it on top of the body. Now, I don't have any uh, ones that are small enough, but let's use this one. Got a hole in the middle just like a guitar. I'm going to put it to see how the guitar looks. And in ancient times, they played with one, and the Wicholas usually used two arrows. But you put it, and you play like this. Why do you use this? Because it's a resonator, resonador, to re-sound something, to repeat the sound. Repeat the sound, resonador, resonate. So how, why, how am I repeating it? Well, look what happens. I'm gonna play the sound in its original state. Now I'm gonna add the resonator to re-sound it. It's gonna go, it's gonna get processed by this thing and the volume will jump up. Now the instrument, you may have seen Brazilians play it like this. Bong, 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 in the, in the capoeira dance. You ever see that martial arts stuff? And that's an African instrument. Um, but in Mexico, we play it like this with the gourd on the ground. And this is a small bow. The bows that were used for this instrument's called tawitol um, in, in Durango with the Tepehuano people, and, uh, or gat, G-A-A-T. And it's always a gourd that's hollow. It's in, on top of the ground. The gourd's usually totally round. And these ceremonial, these, um, these shaman bows or whatever you call them, sacred bows, can be up to like nine, ten feet long. They don't function as, as hunting bows anymore. And there's this deep bass. So this is, I, I had a guy, I called this guy who made Native American bows, and I said, I just wanted Native American style, any, any style. I can't get a hold of the ones from Mexico. So this is a, a natural orange wood. The string is deer skin. It's deer sinew. What a cool song, huh? Let me sing a song for you real quick. Let me teach it to you, because even though we can't play together or sing, <coughs> I'm going to teach you a song. It's the song of the dawn. Um, in other words, the star, the planet Venus was looked at as uh, the, 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 s the symbol of Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent and, and wise, wise man. And the song goes like this. So, so doggy. Say it with me, okay? So, so doggy. Then, i, kijiru. Notice I didn't say doggy. I said doggy. I teach this to schools and my kindergartners get it. All the little blonde-haired kids get it, you know? And, and all the Asian kids, everybody, man. And we got to go, so, so doggy. Then, i, kijiru. A good way to know, know a song that you don't know or know the language is think of sounds. So, so doggy. Hey, there's only four sounds. E Kiji Ru. Hey, four sounds. Hmm. So here it goes. Let me sing it to you. Okay. And you can sing along with me and, and, and it to yourself. 
Um, the song means the word is the water is coming into the house and heat is coming into the house from above. Wow. Was the planet Venus? Go figure. This song was documented by Carl Lumholtz in uh, 1880 to 1890 to 1898. He's a Swedish ethnographer that wrote a wonderful book called Unknown Mexico. I'll have a bibliography available at the end. I do a lot of work in this. So, so, dagi, ikijiru. So, so, dagi, ikijiru, invanini. Now, the way I do it in schools, and you can, you can copy me if you want on this watch, do it echo style. So, so, dagi, so, so, dagi, ikijiru. Ikijiru Invanimi Invanimi Yeah, see, that's what you can do. And then I do things like this go, Woo! And they all repeat the sound, and the kids love this thing, and adults love it too. So it's a way of bringing them in. I always begin my concerts with this very quiet instrument. So known as the Tawitol, or the music of both. But where are the guitars? They come from Spain. Violins, Spain. Harps, violin, you know, all those things from Spain. For some weird reason, I don't know, maybe it's a good reason, I always call it a weird reason, in, in North, Central, and South America, they did not bother to develop the one-string instrument any further. Just, I don't know. You know, the only reason I think they might have done that is because they thought of the bowl as being sacred. It gets your food, it emits a tone. When you take the string off, it does, that's pretty mysterious, you know, the whole science of sound. Um, so you have voice, you have strings, and on string, <laughs> and um, then you have a family called percussion, and percussion is like a last name. You could say, uh, I'll give you a, a quick run through. No, I don't want to be redundant. This is a yaki rattle from, from the state of Sonora. It's a big calabasa or a gourd or a pumpkin plant related to cucumbers and all that stuff. They put rocks inside, and um, you could say his first name is Rattle or Sonaha, or um, in not, we'll use the Nahuatl words, um, uh, Ayakashli. Um, but you could say his last name is Percussion. See? Why? Because it hits. Wait, I didn't hit it. I didn't do that. I caused, when I move it, the, ra the rocks inside, I caused them to hit the wall, so it's Percussion. A gourd cleaned out with a deer skin on top. instrument also known as a kayum usually made of clay the mayans had these okay so you hit it and guess what his last name is percussion the friction drum or the jaguar they sometimes call it in mexico this has got uh, some resin from a tree on here and it rubs and it causes severe vibration the vibration gets on down to the skin and the skin amplifies it and the hole lets the sound out ah resonator huh Interesting. Hey, wait a minute. Resonator. If I cover the resonator, it won't work. Some people want that. Yeah. Now, because I swung it, it caused a vibration. The vibration didn't hit anything, but it went down and made it vibrate. And that's about as close to a percussion as we're going to get. That's a little outside the realm, right? Guido, they usually use it. They say that word in Latin American music. In um, Hirukiam, in Yoeme, the Yaki language, I'm part Yaki. My people, are, my mom's side is from Sonora. So this is an actual um, Hirukiam made by an artist. This is in Palo Fierro. This is one piece of very solid wood. Oh, my God. It weighs... How can I relate to college students? I went to college. Let's see. It weighs about as much as one good-sized book. We don't use books. Well, let's see. It weighs about uh, as much as a, uh, as an iPad. Yeah, there you go. How about that? Palo Fierro is cool. It's really heavy. So what, what happens with, the, with this? How is it percussion? I didn't hit it. But as I slow it down, I get multiple hits. But watch what happens. Listen. Did you hear that? 
it fell down and it hit the groove, so it hit the percussion. Turtle shells. You play here on the end because it vibrates. You know, like uh, when you jump off a, uh, a diving board, do you see the board go like that? See how it's connected to the body? So it actually vibrates over here like that. So you play it with the side of the deer horn. Some people go, don't play with the pika, play it with the side. I like to relay my stor stories when I'm teaching to my elementary schools because I, I have a good time with them. I go, these are from baby deer. <gasps> oh, my God. And I go, wait a minute. What falls off you when you're young? Your teeth. Right? Guess what falls off baby deer? So these are called drop horns. I've got five of them. Let me play them. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe let's see if we can get down there. Bring it out a little. Different sizes get different tones. Always carved. These are from made from Don Maximino Ibarra. Man, I can't tell you. The, I thought they were going to be expensive. I told him I got six hundred dollars, and he goes, "Oh, I'm going to make you two of them." And I go, "Okay, but how much is it going to be, Don Max? I'll call you next week." Uh oh, I found that different sticks yield different sounds. This is perfect when I'm doing the danza. So they have a sound hole in the bottom, and I had to make the keys work. You might see that it's in the shape. It's in the shape of a dog we call it's Quintly, or the little um, uh, what do you call them? Chihuahuas. This is one of our classical instruments. Quick story. I was at a gig. I'm wearing my suit because I'm not wearing this. Like I had the feathers on and everything, right? This cat comes over to me with his suit, bow tie, tuxedo, long tails, holding a very old violin and the bow. And he's looking at my stuff like this. Martin, you have such primitive stuff. Can I see your violin? <laughs> he goes, yeah, here. Nice. What year is this? 1685. Wow. How, how much is it worth? It's about 15,000? That's pretty cool. Thank you. I handed it back to him and I said, very primitive. And he went, oh, I'm sorry, Martin. And I said, yeah, this is made of wood. So is that. Your bow is made of wood. And I'm a little bit educated. I went to college, and I know that the hairs on the violin bow are horse hairs. It's pretty primitive. So he apologizes to me. And I go, I just told him one thing. I went over and hugged him, and I said, I'm just here to teach you, mijo. <laughs> you get the point? These instruments are not primitive. The violin is just as primitive. It's made of wood, just like my tempo nazi. My tempo nazi is a classical instrument. We have classical instruments. There are instruments that are part of the ancient Mexican orchestra. Those are the tempo. Here, here they are. The tempo nazis, the log drums, the turtle shells, the rattles, and the wewe. This is the big hoopty doo of the instruments. This is a little one because I can't bring my big one. My big one's about this tall. But see, it's got the legs and the shape of the, the fire symbol. Always in three. I've never found out what the three was. And um, this is when I, I learned how to carve in like f five weeks. I got its Quintleys, a mom and a baby and a papa, and the symbols of music or the glyphs of music, the cut chifa. And um, here's the wewe. cool that's called railway my god there's so many things to talk about let's move I'm not, I'm not i'm not even one third of the way through and so um so you here here you go 
voice, string, one string, right? Percussion family of all kinds of crazy, there's more. There's stone xylophones, there's water drums. Oh, the water drum, gotta show you this. Uh, where is she at? There it is. Get a gourd, clean it out, okay? And uh, get a stick and cover it with uh, hojas de, uh, uh, de elote. And then you get a pot of water. You let this float in the water. I'm doing something very dangerous. I don't usually do this. With total respect, will it? I have to put my foot on top of my will it. So when I play it outside the water, Nothing happens, but sound vibration travels through water a lot faster than air. If you stick your hand under the water, you'll feel the vibration go up your arm, and guess what's inside your arm that's liquid? Blood, and your blood vibrates too. And I get a lot of people do this. One time somebody says, I'm in a hurry, Martin, I really gotta go. And I was trying to get this gig, right, in San Francisco. And I said, uh, try my water drums just for a second. I think you'll like them. And watch my face. This is what everybody does this. When they get, they, they get on my drums, they get on my turtles, they get on my temple Nazis, they go wild. They get on the water drums and they do this. They all do the same speed and they stare off into space. And then I'm going, do you like the drums? And they're going, yeah, yeah, I like them. They get speechless. And I kept thinking, why do people get so weird when they play the water drums? And, I said, and why are they doing the same speed? And I, the only thing I could think of is that's about the speed of the heartbeat when you're in relaxation and meditation mode. That's one. The other one, is when's the last time you felt totally comfortable and you could sleep for nine months in a liquid environment and you heard a beat from a drum that was regular about maybe about that tempo that's how i thought you big dummy martin that's the they're feeling they're 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 remembering a distant memory of hearing a beat filtered through a water environment and the first thing your brain goes is go like this let's relax that's why we sleep because we don't hear anything else happening uh, great book look up the power of sound it talks about all this so there we go there's the percussion and the last thing I want to do are the winds and let me go ahead and play a piece that's really uh, an interesting one I dedicate this uh, to uh, people like Vanessa Guillen and all the other people that um, is, is men too but I'm just in particular for the lady because this piece w is is called Yao Siwat Yao Siwat Siwat is woman Siwat not Siwatl Siwat Yao Yao Siwat means warrior woman okay so here's warrior woman and I'm gonna play a bunch of wind instruments there's five different kinds of wind instruments whistles trumpets um, pan pipes, yes we had pan pipes, they're not just from South America, and flutes which are cylindrical, and ocarinas which are flutes that are round or vessel shaped. Let me show them to you real quick before I play. Whistles, and they had bizarre whistles. I don't have half the stuff that they made things that you cannot believe. We know that they used sounds for not melodic purposes. They use sounds to do things to your body, to your brain, to your state of awareness. Uh, so, and I'm, I'm not talking new age belief and you know phony things. I'm talking about actual documented stuff. This is crazy what you're going to hear. Then there are, okay, so there's the whistles that make all kinds of sounds. There are the trumpets, and I'll play those. Let's see. Um, there's gourd ones, big long gourds. There's the she shells. Um, the pan pipe, I only have one because I don't have the clay ones. And the flutes, they're single, double, triple, and quadruple. And not only that, they came in different tunings. I thought they only used the black notes of the piano. No, because you didn't do your homework. But now you know. 
you know more than everybody else would. So here we go. If you know how to play recorder, you know how to play all my flutes. Same technique. Stick in mouth, exhale.
Nale ba? Hope you enjoyed that. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what uh, my, my time, um, Gabino, I'm, I'm getting spaced because I'm playing and then it's, it's yeah. Yeah, we if we if we want to open up for questions or anything now would be probably a good time. How much, how much time do we have? Do we have ten minutes? Am I right? We can. Yeah, we're we're good as long as you want to go, man. We're here all night. Man. <laughs> <clears throat> I have so many things to say, and it's not just about the instruments, you know. I mean, I have. Um, I'll make a comparison about this other person that, that, that wanted to learn from me, you know, and it, there's a, it's, there's two points being here. There's this guy that goes, oh, I want to learn everything from me. I go, hey, I want you to acknowledge that I showed you this stuff. It was one thing. I did all my work myself. I worked really hard at that. That's all I asked. Okay, no problem. We shook on it. Then when he started seeing that he could make some money off this and do things, all of a sudden he was a master and found a reason to get mad at me. And then started using my research in other places and posting it. And I'm going, that's gacho. You know, to me, that's a search for El Dorado. That's the Spaniards looking for ways to take advantage of it. And uh, that's okay. You do your thing. It's going to come back to you, and it already has in many ways. Me, I I eat what I do. I don't walk like, see, like other people like that. They they do it for their advantage. They do it for their, as, as uh, one Yaki writer did this, and watch these words really carefully. People doing things for their own self gain at the expense of their indigenous group or their people. Don't do things just for your self gain. You want to do things to help yourself, sure, but but not when you're taking advantage of other people, like collecting the stories and not getting any uh, uh, stories back to the pueblo that you that you documented them from. You know, like the lady that's real famous for all the uh, the Yaki myths and legend. The story was that uh, she went in there, documented all these so songs and stories from these people, and didn't give back to the community. So the Yaquis don't, we don't like to give information out. Don't even like to teach the language. They actually didn't want to even talk to me, talk to them about teaching the language, you know. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, things like that. So watch out. Mm. There, um, I, I live and eat this, you know, I, I, I eat the indigenous foods, I go to the ceremonies, I do I do the, 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 the cleansings of the copal, you know, I, I try to know as many, many things as I can. Uh, I might eat a pepperoni and I might eat some rice, but at least I know where it's from and I know what it does and I know what the cactuses do for my, my system. They help me fight diabetes. I know the, I don't have diabetes, but it helps me fight it. It's got loaded with tons of vitamins. Do searches like what I did, the nutritional value of tomato. Oh, tomato, it's a Nahuatl word, tomat. If you want to know how to pronounce that TL, I'm going to go all, all over the place right now. If you want to know how to pronounce that TL, my uh, a Nawa professor friend of mine said, do this. Stick the tip of your tongue behind your top teeth and leave it there. Don't move it and try to say the letter T in Spanish. You're going to get this. Other people resonate it in the chest and they do this. Don't go. I didn't say go because uh, you don't say T that way. You don't go Tomas. You know, you go Tomas, it's a, it's a mouth thing. So if you try to do that, check it out. Tongue behind the top teeth, leave it there, and go. He said, you will feel air leaving out the side of your mouth. So here's what I, here's what I do. I can, I can read Nahuatl, and you'll think I'm a, I'm a great speaker, but I, I barely know it, you know, and I'm still learning it. My, my specialty are the instruments. Say it slow, and at the end, do the, so watch what I do. Na, hua, Nahuatl. Now what? To ma tomat coyot cacahuat. It's very silent. Cacahuat. Cacahuat. Cool, huh? A lot of our words, a lot of the Spanish words. Uh, can you turn off your uh, mic, please, sir? And um, anyway, so that's where these things come from. Um, I, I want to talk about one more thing too. I, I did some work recently. Um, a, a lady friend of mine called me and said, "Can you do this thing for this drum circle from North, North uh, Native American flutes?" And I said, um, "You you mean this flute?" And she was doing a class about this one. And I go, "Well, the first thing I'm going to say, and I hope nobody doesn't get upset, but I mean, I tell you the truth, that's not the Native American flute." 
Because let's talk about what America is. America is north, central, and south, and they were linked by food staples, by different kinds of dress, by different kind of architecture. They had trade going back and forth. You know, the that that word that everybody uses, pocho. That's not even. It's a perversion of our language. I don't even use it because it's a disgust. It's against the Nahuatl word, pochteca. You know what a pochteca is? Most Mexicans go, I don't know. I said I don't know either too until I discovered a pochteca is a person that travels and trades, sometimes spends the night, travels again, spends the night, travels, they get to California and they trade stuff. Oh, you mean Coco Pelli? Coco Pelli was a pochteca. He was hunchback. No, he was carrying stuff on his back. You, you know what I'm talking about? They talk about it a lot up there. Up there. So he's got a, a backpack and he's playing his flute Probably because to entertain himself, he had feathers, maybe to identify himself, and there were at least four different Native American sign languages. So he could have used sign languages, or she, usually usually it was guys that were doing it, and so when they stayed there, sometimes they would forget their language and marry into the Californian people, so that's where they got that thing, pocho. They come from somewhere and forget their language. So don't even use that. That's a disgusting, I, I think it's disgusting. I don't want to take my my native an ancestor's language and then make a slang out of it and then use it to put something down when the original word is a, is, a ro is a royal, very hazardous occupation of trade. That's how they communicated. And, that's, uh, you know, and just like this, this is not the Native American flute because this is from Native America. This is from like the or original ones were near New York and Canada. Okay? Um, this is Native American because it's found in, in North America. It's an ocarina. Oh, this is Native American, the double, the double barrel flute. Oh, wow, wow this is Native American because it's quadruple flute. Oh, wait a minute. This is Native American because it's a panpipe from, uh, from the Americas. Oh, wow, I got more Native American instruments. See, there's no one, na I call it, I call it Chotanka. I, I use a, 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 what do you call it? A Lakota name. I just call it Chotanka or the Plains flute, you know? So that whole Native American thing, that's another thing too. Um, someone, someone told me, and I want to say this is, uh, defend yourself, learn to defend yourself in these next couple, couple of years that are coming around or the rest of your lives. I had to grow up with things like, go back to where you're from. I have a great answer. It's already totally rehearsed. Want to hear my story real quick? And this guy goes, why don't you go back to where you're from? And I got, and I had it rehearsed to smile, to not show anger. I, how did you know I'm from this continent? That's cool. Are you are you like psychic or something or are you a Cherokee or Cherokee? Oh really? Cool, cool, cool. Uh, you know, uh, uh, but, but what, what's your last name? Oh, well, I'm American. I know you're American, but so am I, man. We thought people come from North America, man. Did you know that Mexico is in North America? Da, da, da. And I, I do that. I, I act like that. You know, I didn't let him speak. He's like sending he's looking at me like this, you know, and um, and then finally he goes, he goes oh, my last name's Thomas. I go. Thomas, isn't that like a name from the British Isles, like Irish, Scottish, or, or, or English? Have you ever tried going back to where you're from? Have you been back there? I'll tell you where I'm going to go right now, bro. I'm going to go back to where I'm from. I'm going back home. My home is on, it's in Long Beach, and it's a little house on the North American continent. A little far away from Mexico, but it's still North American. So I never really left where I live. And my people have been here 60,000 years. How long have your people been here in America? So when I back my stuff up with the history, you know, go ahead and say what you want. You know, you're going to talk to the wrong indigenous cat. You know, how come you're lighter skin, Martin? You're not really indigenous. Um, if you look at this retablo from the 500 years before the Spanish come, it shows a lake in Lake Tehuacan, and it shows people on a boat and on the shore singing and dancing. Guess what colors they are? They're light, they're café con leche, and they're very dark. There was three different colored people there. Hmm, interesting. Or the thing we were talking about earlier, my mustache. Oh, Martin, you have a Spanish mustache. No, because you didn't do your darn homework. Look in the codices. You'll see the guy with the long hair holding a shield and the spear. And he's got a big wipil on, and he's got the, the huaraches, and he's showing his spear, a spear against the Spaniards, and he's got a mustache like Zapata, and he's got a goatee. And it always shows the old guys, all the old guys. Like it must have been some kind of thing in, that the young guys either couldn't grow, the, grow it or it wasn't allowed. But they usually show old guys with mustaches where it goes down, 
sometimes this way. Usually it's down, and it connects here with the goatee. If you look at Wewe Teot, he's always sculptures of him showing holding up this big disc, and he's always with his legs crossed, and he's like this. This is Wewe Teot, old god. He's got a goatee. In so there's a whole thing there, you know. we got to know our culture. The other thing is these are not pre-Hispanic instruments. It's like I draw the, the, same, the same thing. It's, well, um, you, you said they were before the Spanish come. Yeah, but here's my logic. Why am I going to name my instruments, my Mexican instruments, my Guatemalan instruments, my Mayan, my Yaqui, my Totonac, my Toltec, my whatever. Why am I going to name my instruments with the culture that tried to destroy us? Oh, these are pre-Spanish. I don't care. These are Mexican instruments. These are Guatemalan. These are Central American. These, you know, that's where I come from, you know, on that. You know, and um, 